Hello, dear friends, my name is Dr. Igor Etabekov. I'm a clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. Uh, today, I would like to talk to you about the uh, prosthetic cancer with uh, bone metastasis because it's a um, um, type of cancer that often gives uh, metastasis or spreads to bones and uh, it can be a real uh, problem. I often get these questions from my patients. That's why let's talk about the uh, official medicinal methods that can be used in such patients. So, first of all, symptoms. Pain. Pain is number one symptom. Yes, some patients may be asymptomatic, but many of them may have pain and often it's undertreated. Uh, and uh, their bone with metastasis may have uh, some dysfunction, may uh, have uh, fractures, may be very fragile, even without trauma, they may break, and uh, they may be injury to some uh, nerves and blood vessels uh, that are located nearby. So, first of all, what can we use for pain? Uh, the basis is uh, painkillers. Uh, we use uh, usually uh, opiates, they are narcotic analgetics, uh, the strongest ones uh, that uh, because the bone pain is very severe usually and um, this is the basis plus we use adjuvants what is that these are the painkillers with different mechanisms of actions they're not as strong usually but they can help to improve efficacy in combination with opiates uh, for example uh, we can use paracetamol or we can use uh, usual painkillers for tooth ache or we can use osteoclast inhibitors. They are drugs that decrease bone resorption or destruction. We'll talk about this later. Also, uh, there are some systemic therapies like chemotherapy. Uh, usually, these are docetaxel or cabazitaxel. Uh, the drugs, they affect uh, everything, the tumor and all metastasis in all the body. And also, hormonal therapy. Prosthetic cancer is very dependent on hormones, on hormonal stimulation, at least at the beginning of the course. That's why when the hormonal receptors on the tumor cells are stimulated by hormones in the body, the tumor will get the signal to grow. That's why we need to block this hormonal stimulation. Uh, first of all, we need to decrease the level of testosterone in the body. Uh, before we, the surgeons did castration, uh, removing the um, testicles of the man. Now you don't need to do this. Now you need to do the local injections of the um, drugs that will decrease the testosterone levels. These are done once in a month, in three months, in half a year, depending on the drug. This will decrease the levels of testosterone. Second, many patients will need to have other type of drugs uh, in combination, of course, um, to block these receptors on the tumors and uh, these are insulatomide, epilotomide, all these affect the tumor, all these help with bone pain and uh, decrease the risk of fractures. And of course, uh, there are different types of radiation therapy. If the metastasis is single, one, dominant, painful, all the others are not, um, not painful or not uh, disturbing the patient, we can use the external beam radiation where the beam goes through the skin onto the metastatic site in the bone and it will destroy it. The problem is only 60% will have pain relief and often pain may come back. Should we do it again, this radiation therapy? Sometimes you can do it, but uh, it will increase the risks of toxicity because it's ionizing radiation. By the way, 90% of patients on radiation therapy may have the problems with their skin because radiation comes through the skin. It will be inflamed or even can have some uh, wounds there. That's why I talked about radiation dermatitis, how to prevent and minimize it in separate video. Please watch it if you are up, uh, if you are about to undergo radiation therapy. And there is other type of radiation therapy that uh, is for multiple metastases. Uh, the, here we inject the isotopes, uh, radioactive uh, substances uh, that will spread and um, accumulate in the bones. 
and uh, they will release their uh, alpha particles for radium or beta particles for samarium and strontium. So these substances sit in the bone, uh, sit in metastasis and produce this ionizing radiation there in this metastasis. Alpha particles are more effective. Uh, they don't uh, fly so far. They have less uh, ability to damage their bone marrow inside the bones. And uh, this is very important for cancer patients and for those who have already tired bone marrow that is already uh, affected by the tumor, by the uh, chemotherapy. These patients may have already low red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, for example. And uh, if we add some radiation, it may cause the failure of bone marrow. That's why uh, these things, beta particles, samarium and strontium, are more dangerous because the particles are flying further. Alpha particles and radium, they don't fly so far. Uh, but still, there is some risk, like about 2%, to cause this bone ma marrow failure. But these alpha particles are better because they also improve the survival of such patients. Next, the substances, the drugs that help to stop bone resorption and bone destruction. These are denosumab and uh, zoledronate. Denosumab is the very modern drug uh, that is a little bit more effective than, than uh, bisphosphonates and it doesn't cause um, the kidney toxicity. That's why if the patient has severe kidney problems, I better to use denosumab. But it's much more expensive. The other thing is uh, zoledronate uh, can be used once in three months, uh, as effectively as once in a month. That's why it's more comfortable for patients. By the way, I forgot to tell you that these uh, radioisotopes should not be used with hormonal therapy together. But they are used very well with osteoclast inhibitors. Again, I told you that, um, for example, patient has a big metastasis and uh, it's painful and radiation therapy didn't work, for example. And he has still pain, he's taking painkillers and nothing helps. What can be done? Of course, there are ablation techniques. These are methods uh, aimed to local destruction of the tumor. I made a video before already on pancreatic uh, cancer ablation, on uh, the treatment of cancer without surgery. I talked about them already there and even showed some videos. But here again, uh, the effectiveness in uh, bone, in pain relief is uh, about 90% and after three months, 95%. And after two years, uh, the tumor may be still uh, under control, no pain, no growth. Uh, maybe even uh, not viable in 90% of cases. But of course, it can have some complications uh, because we need to put needle, we can injure something, or when we make this area of uh, destruction around the tumor, it may also cause some injury to surrounding tissues. That's why it also has some complications, but mostly everything goes on well. So first method is radio frequency ablation. This is fast, effective, cheap, but has uh, some pain after procedure and during procedure. That's why it needs, of course, the general anesthesia. And uh, it's difficult to monitor the ablation zone, the zone around the electrode. We put electrode and there is the uh, red high frequency waves going out and heating up the tissue around. And this zone may be not round and uh, sometimes it's difficult to understand uh, what will be the shape, how it will go, and how much we need to destroy around. And it's for few metastases, for very intense pain, and it needs a good access uh, to, to put the needle, no surrounding, uh, no important surrounding tissues. Other methods is cryoablation or freezing of the tumor. It's uh, easier to monitor, uh, less pain. We put uh, the, uh, we put two tubes inside from then we pump in the gas ergon to freeze the tumor then helium to unfreeze again freeze and freeze crystals are formed ice crystals they will uh, damage the membranes and the cells will die it will produce the as uh, the frozen ice globe around the tips of these uh, tubes it can be used for bigger injury for bigger lesions it has less pain better controlled but unfortunately, it's more expensive. 
Also, there is the high frequency, uh, high intensity focused ultrasound. Uh, this uh, you don't need even to put any tubes or needles. You can do it through surface with special device through skin. But unfortunately, it's expensive, and also you need a good excess, no tissues, important tissues covering the um, metastasis. Also, there is microwave ablation, uh, more effective tumor destruction in larger zones if you use several antennas. Compared, I mean, to radio frequency ablation, but in general, it looks uh, quite close to radio frequency ablation. And one more method, very modern, is called nano knife, where there are, you see there are electrodes and the electric field is produced between them and it destroys the tumor. No surrounding tissue damage, very well controlled. Unfortunately, very rare and expensive nowadays. Also, sometimes the surgeons may be needed, orthopedic surgeons. Uh, for example, two situations. One, only one metastasis, no other tumor in the patient. What can we do? We can remove this piece of bone, right? In order to potentially cure this patient. Or in most cases, uh, if there is a very affected bone and the impending fracture with, uh, for example, possible damage to spinal cord, damage to important uh, nerves or blood vessels. Of course, we need to um, help these patients. Often they, for example, inject the cement uh, to or put some carcass to strengthen the weak part of the bone. Dear friends, that's all on official methods. Of course, you must remember that all these methods, they don't, mostly, they don't cure the uh, tumor. They only relieve uh, suffering, relieve pain, and prolong the life time of these patients. That's why it's necessary to seek for other uh, types of adjunctive methods. For example, work with immunity, uh, help uh, by usage, for example, of medicinal mushrooms, I have a playlist on medicinal mushrooms on my channel that can be potentially used in cancer. Or I have a playlist on mitochondrial theory of cancer and uh, on, uh, on different methods to try to starve the tumor with change of uh, diet, for example, or blockage of glutamine. These are not methods that are in protocols. They don't have uh, enough scientific data to uh, totally to be recommended for these patients by official medicine, but they have a lot of uh, data already. But again, this is the separate topic I was talking about in different videos. I will leave the links below. Thank you for everyone who support this channel. You can become our sponsor or you can also support uh, me in PayPal, for example. The links are under this video. I hope it was useful and interesting for you. I wish you good luck and have a power to struggle with this issue. I believe that every tumor can be cured, even if it's totally widespread and uh, seems uncurable. The thing is, all the tumors are different and all the patients are different, and there is no single remedy that will help everyone. But there are a lot of um, situations when the patients get totally cured, even having a lot of metastases, if they found a perfect combination of different drugs and supplements for themselves. Again, sometimes chemotherapy or immune therapy can totally uh, can lead to total disappearance of all the tumor from the body. And we oncologists are always happy to see these situations. So good luck and see you in the next videos. Bye. Don't be